Hello everyone, it's Dave Bredhauer. Thanks for joining me today. We're going to be making some pastel inspired Easter cards using dies from the 2017 Memory Box and Poppy Stamps collection. So let's get started. First up, we're going to be doing this really fun floral Easter egg card. We're going to use a Memory Box pristine egg die as well as an open studio half a dozen egg set. You'll see there's lots of different size eggs in this set, one of which matches the pristine egg perfectly. We're also going to be using the Tag Your It rectangles from Open Studio, which makes three fun tags that you can use as tags or as embellishments on a card. When I run the pristine egg through my die cut machine, I'm going to use a metal adapter plate. There's some fine detail on the pristine egg die, and the metal adapter plate makes it cut like butter. Once it's finished, I'm going to remove the die, and I'm going to start poking out all the spots that need to be removed. This craft pick from Tim Holtz helps me get into all the little tiny spots that need to be poked out. It's an excellent tool. I can't recommend it enough. A lot of memory box dies are very delicate, so a trick I've learned after removing extra pieces is to flatten it back out by just running the die cut right back through my die cut machine. Just put it between the plates, run it through, and it's nice and flat, ready to work with. I've chosen four colors to decorate my Easter egg. The first one is Distress Ink Wilted Violet. I'm just going to rub it on in a circular motion and then follow that up with another Distress Ink Tumble Glass, which is a really nice pale blue color. After that, I'm going to apply yet another Distress Ink, Sponge Sugar, and I want to make sure as I'm applying these colors that I'm slightly overlapping the color that I just previously applied. Finally, I'm going to use a fresh ink color called chamomile, nice soft yellow, to complete this pastel Easter egg dyed look. To adhere these two pieces together, I'm going to use some quick drying tacky glue on the back of the pristine egg die cut. I'm just going to apply the glue directly from the tip of the bottle, putting little dots of glue in all the little spots that I'll want to glue down so that things are nice and covered. Alternatively, you can make a small puddle of glue and use a toothpick apply it to the back of the die cut. Carefully pick up the die cut. If you get a little bit of glue on your fingers, that's okay. And I like to start at one edge when adhering these two pieces together. Hold your breath and start manipulating the edges so that they touch right where they're supposed to. Just take your time and section by section, push the piece down into place until things are right where they're supposed to be. Now it's time to get your tag ready for the base of the card. I'm going to use a size that works well with the size of egg. I'm going to cut out a piece of violet paper so that I have a nice frame to work with. Next, I need to get a blue background and I need to measure that out. So I'm going to use my craft pick to mark the corners so that I know how big I need to cut that piece of blue paper to fit behind the purple frame. You can use a pencil to mark this, whatever's convenient for you. I'll go ahead and trim it now and make sure that that blue piece fits nicely behind the purple frame. After you check and make sure that it does, you're going to apply some foam mounting tape along the edges of the purple frame. I've cut some tiny strips, nice and narrow, so they don't show up once you put them on the card. It isn't necessary to put foam mount tape along the entire perimeter of the frame. I've just put it in the corners and right near the little open hole at the top. I'm going to remove the backing, and then I'm going to set the blue piece right on top of the adhesive and make sure that it fits nice and secure. I'll flip it over and apply some foam mounting tape to the back of the Easter egg. This will bring it up to the level of the frame and make it look like it's floating on the tag. I'm going to position it so it's nice and centered. Next, for some embellishments, I'm going to use some sequins from Pretty Pink Posh. These tiny 3 millimeter clear sequins work great with this super delicate design. I'm going to apply small dots of glue to the center of some of the flowers on the Easter egg. And then using my finger, I'm just going to put the sequin in place and nudge it so that it's right in the center. You don't have to put sequins on the center of every flower in the lacy design. Four or five sequins will do. Now I want to add a little bit of twine to my tag. So I'm going to cut off about 12 inches or so and use that as an embellishment at the top. Make a small loop in the middle of the twine and thread it from the back to the front of the tag. Use your fingers to gently pull the loop up through the hole and then take the ends of the twine and thread them through the loop. Pull it tight 
and you're done. Mount your tag on a pastel colored card, such as this memory box Snapdragon card, and your project is complete. And here's a bonus idea while you have all of your ink pads out and you've cut a few extra Easter eggs. I'm going to use post-it notes to create a mask on each egg. I'm going to apply a swirl of color across the edge of the post-it note so that I start coloring in different shades of pastel on different parts of the egg. Once you've filled in one area, remove the post-it note and reapply a new one over the area that you just colored. Keep in mind that your ink is still wet, so your post-it notes aren't going to want to stick very well. Simply keep your fingers on top of the post-it notes while you do your sponging. I'm going to use the same colors that I just used in the previous project, but because I'm masking off areas, it's going to create a nice stripe pattern. You could make this more complicated. These are pretty simple. I just used a plain post-it note, but you could use a post-it note that's been cut with a decorative edge to make something a little bit more interesting. I'm finishing up the bottom of the Easter egg with a few more pastel colors, making sure that I hold those post-it notes down since the ink's wet. And then you can reveal it. I'm going to pull the post-it notes off and you'll see stripes of color. These are pretty fun and quick. You can make a whole bunch in a little bit of time. These make super fun and quick tags to use on Easter baskets and gifts. Now here's another project that I think you'll have a lot of fun with. It features an Easter egg frame from Memory Box that can be used in two different ways for two very different looks. So let's get started. I'm going to be using the Happy Easter Journal Script Die and the Easter Extravaganza Frame. The Easter Extravaganza Frame is very detailed. It's got cut portions and it's got embossed portions. And I'm going to show you how you can use these to create some really great projects. For this first card, I'm going to apply pastel colored ink to some white cardstock. I'm using a rubbing circular motion and overlapping the color so that it blends and adds new color as you go. I'm going to be using Distress Ink in Tumble Glass, Distress Ink in Sponge Sugar, Fresh Ink in a color called Celery, and Fresh Ink in a color called Chamomile. And finally, a little bit of Wilted Violet Distress Ink. As you're applying color, make sure that you're not overlapping colors that don't go with each other. Purple and blue might make a nice combination, but purple and yellow might get a little bit muddy. Just keep adding color until you've filled in around the edges. Now you're going to run the die through a die cut machine with a piece of white cardstock. Then run it through again with an embossing pad with the die cut still stuck inside the die. This will create raised details throughout the frame. Now place the die cut over the sponged area. You'll want to line it up so it corresponds to some interesting areas of color. I'm going to mark the corners with my craft pick again so that I can trim that down and fit it behind this die cut. I'll trim it to a standard four and a quarter by five and a half inch A2 card size and then I'm ready to apply some glue to the back of my die cut. I'm using a quick drying tacky glue to the back of the die cut applied directly from the tip of the bottle. I'm taking my time and applying glue in as many little spaces as I can so that it's going to hold down to that background really well. Because it's a liquid adhesive, I have a little bit of room to play when I'm trying to move things around and get it in just the right spot. It's also a little bit easier to use a wet glue in this application because of all the little details that you have to glue around. Next, I'm going to take the Happy Easter Journal Script die, and I'm going to cut each of the words out three times. Here I have three happies, and I'm going to stack them together and glue each one to the next. Using the tip of the bottle, I'm going to apply tiny drops every half inch or so on each of the words. And then I'm going to begin stacking the words on top of each other. I find it's easiest if you start at one end, and just move letter by letter, until you fit it all nicely on top of each other. If you found you made a mistake, just gently pull the letter back up and reapply. Wet glue is pretty forgiving. Now that I've got my first layer on, I'm going to apply another layer of glue on top of the second one. Again, just a few drops here and there, just enough to make sure that things adhere well. And gently I'm going to start at one end and carefully move across the length of the word, letter by letter, using my fingers to manipulate everything in place. 
This technique takes a little bit of time to do, but the effect is really nice. It's such a thick die cut. We'll follow up using the same technique for the word Easter. I'll cut it out three times, apply drops of glue every half inch or so, and then begin stacking them all one at a time. Start at one end, hold it in place, and try to stay as steady as possible. If something gets out of alignment, just pull it off gently. And since it's wet glue, it'll come off fairly easily. And reposition. Now I want to do some paper inlay for the center of the die cut. So I've run it through the machine again, this time with a paper that's blue on one side, so that I can use that in the center to mask out some of the sponged background. I'm going to use more of that quick drying glue to adhere these pieces together, just because I can apply it in little dots anywhere, but I can also get into all the little fine corners and details around the edges, easier than if I had a tape gun. You'll want to apply the glue fairly close to the edges so that when you fit it back into that space in the middle, it will lay nice and flat and lay at the same level as that white die cut. The Happy Easter words should be dry by now, so it's time to put them in place right side up. I'll just use some more tacky glue to adhere them to the blue background. And to finish it off, I'm going to use some Nouveau Jewel Drops. This pink color is so beautiful and works perfectly with the pastel shades on the card. Once you get the jewel drops going on a test piece nearby, you can begin adding small drops along the borders of the card. You can add as many as you like. I'm doing some every few inches or so, and then in some spots I'm going to add more. This glossy pink is translucent, so it catches the light and it's just such an amazing effect. I love how that sponge background shows through on the edges of the die cut. It's almost like pastel stained glass. Onto a different version of the card using the same dies. The technique begins the same. I'm going to take some pastel inks and apply them to some white cardstock. In fact, I'm going to use the exact same colors that I used before, but this time I'm going to fill the center in as well, instead of just staying to the edges. I'm going to make sure that my die cut fills the entire sponged area and then run it through the machine. You'll want to save the centerpiece. It's all filled with color. I want you to remember this because we're going to use this in a future project. I'm going to use my craft pick to loosen the die cut from the die. Just put the pick through tiny little holes in the die and gently remove it, moving around the edge until it pops out. One bonus with this technique is all the little shapes that pop out of the die cut as you're working with it. There's lots of little flowers and different size eggs that come out that you can use on other projects. Flip over the die cut to begin applying your adhesive. Again, glue is the best option here so you can get little bits of adhesive on the stripes and the flowers and the edges of this intricate die cut. I've cut a piece of white cardstock to four and a quarter by five and a half, a standard A2 size, and I'm going to mount the die cut right on top of it, making sure that all four corners line up square. Next, I'm going to take that Happy Easter journal script die, cut it out in a soft pink color, and apply glue to the words. I've chosen a soft pink color, but any pastel shade will work. Once you've applied glue every half inch or so on the words, you're going to flip it over and line it up onto the card. Repeat the same process with the word Easter. You'll apply glue every half inch or so, flip it over, and gently tuck it down onto the paper. We've used the exact same die cuts, but it has a twist. The cards look different and fresh. The soft pastel colors really stand out against the white background. It's a perfect springtime look. Now for our final card, I wanted to make a project that combined the look of these pastel inks with a beautiful shimmer effect. This card uses dies from our 2017 Poppy Stamps collection. The Happy Easter Egg die has Happy Easter in a gorgeous font and an egg floating behind the words. Now remember that scrap of paper I had you keep from the last project? We're going to use the stitched egg medley on it, and now you'll see why. We have all that great sponged background and we didn't want to just throw it out. So I ran it through the die cut machine with a stitched egg medley. I'm going to poke them out and you'll see that most of these eggs have already been 
dyed, well, sponged, and have beautiful color already applied to them. Saves a lot of work. Some of them are a little solid, so I've decided to add some extra ink just around the edges to brighten them up a bit. I'm using tumbled glass distress ink just on the edge, just apply a little bit to the bottom, and move around to different eggs until they all have a nice combination of color. Now you could get really detailed and apply ink with some Copic marker, maybe add stripes on here, but I've decided to make it quick and simple by just adding a little bit of the distressed ink along the edges. I'm going to use one of my layers from the Open Studio Pinpoint Rectangle Layer Set. I've cut out a piece of off-white cardstock using the largest layer, and I'm going to use my inks to sponge a background. I'm going to begin in the middle this time. I'm going to use that celery color from Fresh Ink and follow it up with the chamomile color from Fresh Ink as well. I'm going to fill the entire rectangle in with color all the way to the edge, and I want to make sure that each area of color overlaps the next. These colors go nicely with each other. I'm going to use the pink and the green and the yellow all to make a combination of color over the background, and when they blend over each other, they create new colors. Next, I'm going to take that Happy Easter Egg die, and I'm going to cut it out three times, because again, I want to do that layering technique where we layer three dies on top of each other. It takes a little extra time, but I think it makes your project look so unique. And just like with anything, practice makes perfect. I bet it won't be much time before you're really quick at this. I've definitely gotten quicker at it as I've done it over the years. Just start at one end, maybe pinch one area in place, and you're going to move each letter to the right spot as you go. Once you have all three layers gathered together, you're going to go back to that half a dozen egg die set and pick out the correct egg to go with the Happy Easter. Yes, some of the things that we design in Memory Box go perfectly with the things in Poppy Stamps. So I'm going to take that Easter egg, put it on a soft pink cardstock, and cut it out. This will be the background that goes behind that floating egg. Now I'm going to gather up those stitched eggs that I made earlier. I'm going to get out my Wink of Stella pen and add a little bit of shimmer. The visual effect you get with this marker is perfect for pastel cards. I'm just going to rub the tip of the marker all along the edge and insides of that cardstock and then move right on top of those stitched eggs. The marker is compatible with the pigment ink that we've been using. It won't smear it, and it allows all that pastel color to shine through beautifully. It goes on really even, too. It doesn't get too wet, won't curl your paper. just applies a nice, thin shimmer of color on top of whatever you have underneath. The other thing that I've noticed about these Wink of Stella markers is that they last a long time, too. I do tend to use them on everything, so if you're like me, you might keep a couple around. And here's a nice picture of that beautiful shimmer. So now that you have everything prepped, we're ready for our final assembly. I flipped over the Easter egg die cut, and I'm applying wet glue to the edges and all the letters of Happy Easter. I'm ready to put my background Easter egg in place. I'm going to flip it over and stick it right where the glue is, making sure that the edges line up perfectly. Once that's in the right spot, I can apply a little bit more glue to the back of that egg so that when I put it on the card, it'll stay in the right spot. I'm going to flip it over, and I'm going to gently press it down onto that rectangle layer that we sponged previously. Use your fingers to put things in the right spot so that the words and the egg background are well attached to the card. Now you're ready for the final assembly. It's up to you how you'd like to compose the eggs on the card. You could line them up, you could put them along the edge. I've decided to put them randomly around the panel at different angles, almost like they're sort of rolling around on the card. The shimmer just really makes them stand out, and the stitched patterns, delicate and tiny and very eye-catching. It's one of my favorite designs. If you have any leftover small Easter eggs, that's okay. You can use them on another project. These are a great scale. Use them in an Easter basket or on a tag. It's a versatile design for springtime projects. Thanks for joining me today. I've linked products in the description below. Please check out our entire collection at memoryboxco.com and poppystamps.com.